Persian dog to the land of Greece. Here are the trusted. As protectors of treasure and of golden thrones, we were chosen by Xerxes, emperor and king, son of Darius, to record with age, guards of our country. For the king's return with his troops of gold, The omen in my heart convulsed as it pines for its master. For all Asia is gone. To the city of Persians, neither a herald nor horseman returns. And Achilles. some Akbatana, and Achilles. some Susa, and ancient Kissa leaving, both on, on horse and on ship, and on foot displayed. Legions of battle, Artrenis, Megabatis, Astesis. A mistress, leaders of Persians, kings, who are slaves of the greatest of kings. Guarding the legions they rush, and as soldier and officer, with their temper resolved, fearful in aspect, dreadful in battle, and exultant in horses, Artemaris, her sistress, the brave sniper Emmaus, Pharendacus, and the driver of horses. Status. And others were sent by the flourishing Nile, Egyptian born Sisiskanis, Palestagar, and Great Arsames, ruler of sacred Memphis, and Ariomardus, governing ancient Thebes, who, dwelling by marshes, are sailors of ships, skillful and countless. And the Lydians soft to inhabit the coast, follow commanders and kings. Metrogothis and brave Arteus, and golden Sardis sends many, many charioteers, horses by threes and fours, fearful the sight to behold. And the neighbors of Ptolemus who threatened to yoke in servitude Hellas, and the Mycenaean lancers, Therabas, Mardis, angles of battle, and golden Babylon, moors forth through her crowds, borne by her ships, who in drawing the bow rely on their boldness, and the tribes of all Asia who carry the sword follow beneath the awesome parade of their king. Armies, navies, thus around the Persian land of her men, the flower is gone, and all Asia laments, consumed by desire. And parents and wives, counting the days, days tremble at length of length time. time. That destroyer of cities now, that vast army is gone over the strait to the land, or linen bound pontoons, tightly was clamped the way, and Hella of Athens crossing, yoking the neck of the sea. And the furious leader of the herd of populous Asia he drives, wonderful over the earth. Admiral stern and rough, rulers of men he trusts. Gold is the center of Perseus. He is the equal of God. Army, navy, lazuli eyes, like a snake's murderous glances, with his warriors many, and mariners many, and his Syrian chariot driving hard over the glorious spearmen, the archer Ares he leads. Of the great torrent of heroes, there is none worthily equal. Who resist, by defenses secure it, the unconquerable billows of ocean? For divine fate has prevailed since it enjoined Persians to wage wars, which topper towers and ramparts, and the glad tumult of horsemen and cities overthrown. When the vast ocean was boiling by the winds moisturous white, then they learned, trusting to cables and to pontoons which convey men to scare the sacred sea. Deceitful deception of God. What mortal man shall avoid it? Who, with nimbleness, deftness, and speed, whose leaping foot shall escape it? Benign and coaxing at first, it leads us astray into nets which no mortal is able to slip. 
whose doom we never can flee. Boston, sable clad by heart is torn. Fearful for those Persian arms, lest the city here, alas, that rest of men is Susa. And lest the city kisses shall, when the crowds of women cry, sing antiphonal the alas, and rend their garb of mourning, all the horse and infantry, like a swarm of bees, have gone, with the captain of the host, who joined the headlands of my land, crossing the yoke of the sea. Thence, with long and filled with tears, Persian wives in softness weep, each her arm in furious lord, dismissed with gentle love and grief, left all alone in the yoke. But come, Persians, let us in this ancient palace sit it, and deep and wisely found our thoughts. How does King Xerxes fare, Darius' son? How fair his people? Has missiles hail, or strength of weapon conquered? But lo, she comes up, a light whose splendid equals eyes of God. Mother of our king, I kneel. Now all must address and salute her. O oh, majestic queen of the Persians, in my ample folds adorned, hail, aged Yerxes' mother, consort of Darius, hail, mistress of a god of Persians, mother of a god thou art, and less the fortune of their arms, now at last has altered. Leaving my gold-clad palace, marriage chamber of Darius and my own, his queen I'm come. Fear quite breaks my heart. I fear, though not fearful for myself, lest great wealth's gallop trip across marriage, exalted by Darius and some god, in its own dust. Sums of great wealth to court contempt, and images quenches ambition's flame, even if there's strength. Though wealth we have unstinted, yet fear I for mine eye Xerxes, whose presence here I count the palace eye. Advise my reason, Persians, old sureties. All my gains with your counsel lie. O oh, Queen of Persia, be assured that never twice hast thou to tell us word or deed which our willing strength can guide, for we are loyal to what thou dost call thy counsel. With frequent, constant, and nocturnal dreams I have lived, as soon as my son, gathering his hosts, Village Greece. But never such a vivid apparition as yesternight's. Two women in an apparition came. One in Persian robes, instructed well. The other Doric, both splendidly dressed, who most beautifully appeared and were spotless. Sisters they, who Searching for their father's land, she Greece received, she Asia, there to dwell. But strife arose between them, <coughs> so I grieved. And my son, observing this, tries to check and soothe them. He yokes them to a chariot, bridles their necks, and one so arrayed stands proud. <coughs> her mouth obedient to things, but the other stamps annoyed and rends her trappings in her hands. Unbridled, she seizes the car and snaps the yoke in two. My son, observing this, falls, and his father, pitying, stands by his side, but at whose sight Xerxes tears his robes. 
adjacent fields of Salamis. Wall upon wall of friends, to see thy corpses swirl, vagrant on cragged shores. The bow protected none, but all our troops defeated in the naval charge was lost. Praise the mournful funeral cry for Persians wretched. All oh, they made all woe. Alas, the, the army, army destroyed. destroyed. Oh, most hateful name was Salamis. Oh, woe. Oh, how I mourn recalling Athens. Athens, hateful to our above. Recall how many Persians we have vain and mothers losing sons. Long am I silent. Alas, struck down by disaster, exceeding speech and question. But men, perforce, God sent misfortune must endure. Speak, disclose entire what befell, quietly, though you grieve. Who did not die? For whom of the captains shall we lament? Who scepter death drained his ranks manless? Xerxes lives to behold the light. Oh, but for my fellows a greater life, and after blacker night, a whiter day. Ardenberries, captain of ten thousand horse, was dashed against Selenius' rugged shore. Oh. And Sidratidakis, sword struck, did lightly tumble from his ship. And native born Tanagon, the uh, bravest Bactrian, uh, still haunts sea buffeted Ajax Isle. Uh, uh, and Lelaeus, Arsenus, Agestes, defeated on the island where doves thrive, beat a stubborn coast. And natives to Egyptian Nile waters, Aeneas, Arceus, and a third, shielded Farnucus, uh, from a single ship were drowned. Uh, uh, and Metallus. The trap of Trisa, dying leader of a thousand horse, did change to richest red his thick set flowing beard, and dipped his skin in crimson gore. <laughs> and Magian Aramis and Bactrian Artemis, all aliens in a savage country perished. Messian Sesamias, <laughs> Theravis, captain of five times fifty ships, his race Lernian fair to look upon. His fate was not. Dead he lies. And the leaders of Sicilians did single-handedly tax our enemy with toil, and then nobly died. So many of the rulers I recall, but of the many poles were but few. Oh. Alas, I hear in the greatest of disaster, shame of Persians and sheer lament. But tell me, returning to your tale, what was the number of the Grecian ships who thought themselves a match to Persian arms in naval combat? Had numbers counted, the barbarian warships would have surely won. The Greeks but numbered ten squadron, each of thirty ships, and one apart from these, the chosen squadron four. But Xerxes, and thus I know full well, a thousand led, and seven and two hundred ranks as queens of swiftness. The count stood so, seeing we unequal. Some deity destroyed our host, having weighed down the balance, swung the beam of misfortune. The gods saved the city of the goddess. <laughs> what? Athens still stands on sight? So long as there are men, the city still stands. <laughs> Who began the disaster? The Greeks? My son exultant in his numbers? An avenger or a wicked god, my lady. From whence it came, I know not began the whole disaster. From Athenian Greek, a Greek approached, addressing Xerxes thus. When the gloom of blackest night will fall, no Greek will remain, but leaping to transit station, and each by secret course will save his life. And he, your son, of 
upon hearing this ignorance of the guile of Greeks and the jealousy of the gods, harangued his captains publicly. When sunlit rays no longer cross the sky, and darkness swarms the quarters of the sea, break the ships and three flotillas, guard they the entrances and the straight sea ponds, girdle others round Ajax Isle. But if the Greeks should escape their evil doom, contriving secret flight, all your heads will roll. I warrant that. So he spoke in humor pride. Of the God-given future, nothing he knew. And having supped, they set themselves in order, every heart obedient. And when the glare of sunlight died and night came on, every man was at his post. Every man at arms who knew them, rank and courage, rank and longboat sailed to the station that each had been assigned. All night, captains kept their fleet awake, and night ran on. No Grecian warship set secret sail. But when the steeds of day, bright and luminous, began to cross the sky, a happy, song-like tumult sounded from the Greeks, and the island rocks returned their high-pitched echoes. Fear fell among us, deceived in hope. For they, and not as if to flee, a solemn pay enchanted, and rushed into battle with fevered boldness. At once, concordant sounds of oars and dissonance slapped the water's depths, and then we saw them all. At first, the right wing led in order, and next advanced the whole armada. A concerted cry we heard. O Greek sons, free thy father's land, free thy sons, thy wives, the sanctuaries of paternal gods, the sepulchres of ancestors. The contest is drawn. All is at stake. And Babel Persian tongues rose to meet it. No longer with the action loiter. A Grecian man of war began the charge. A Phoenician ornamented stern was smashed. One drove against another, and at first the flood of Persians held the line. But when narrows choked and rescue hopeless, smit by prows, their bronze jaws gaping, shattered and tired was our fleet. Oh. The Grecian oh. warships, calculating, dashed round and encircled us. Ships showed their bellies. No longer could you see the water charged with shipwrecks and men's blood. Corpses flooded the rocks and the beaches. My lady, rest assured, never in a single day so great a number died. Alas, the sea of troubles brings in waves on the Persians and the barbarian tribes. But what we have told would scarcely beheld its woe untold. Misfortune came upon them, which swung the beam to win them double deeds. But what greater hatred could fortune show? What befell the troops swinging the beam of fortune to greater woe? There's an island, running Salamis, scarce an anchorage for ship, small, where the pan dancer pan rejoices. Whither Xerxes sent these men to kill the ship shipwrecked enemies who sought the island as refuge, as easily she thought the Grecian arms would be subdued. He also bid them rescue friends. He conned the future ill. For when Greeks gave the gods the glory that very day, fenced in bronze, they leaped ashore and encircled us on every corner. Mewed in, we could not turn. And warships urged their own anarchic route. And those who survived the expedition, like mackerel or some catch of fish, stunned and slaughtered, both broken, spreading the destruction the whole wide ocean o'er. Cries and lamentations possessed the open sea until the black eye of night, hushing, closed them all. My lady, I promise you, never in a single day 
in our history have we lost so many men. Oh, what a sea of troubles, floods, and breaks waves on the Persians. Now all age 
such a desolate void, mourns lament. Yuxi is led. Alas, Yuxi is lost. Oh woe! Yuxi is heedless, all discharged to ocean's argosies. Why must the rise so long without harm? Armies, captain of citizens, loving Susan's lord. Armies, navy, <coughs> lazuli, I, linen winged warships led. Oh, wow. Warships crammed destructively by Cretan arms. Oh, scarcely saved was the leader alone, so I have heard. In Thracian places. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They of the first death, alas, left by necessity. Whoa, round by Cretan roars, oh. Early to send this bone to the heavens, your grief. Oh, well, long weeping, mournful cry. Oh, hunger oh. oh, is the tongue imprisoned cat. When loose our bed, when loose the balance of the power of the goat, took all their liberty. But Ajax Lyle, well, filled with blood, sir. Watch the remains of Persia. Oh, the remains of Persia. My friends, whoever's wise in ways of evil knows how when a flood of evil comes, everything will grow to fear. But when a god our voyage gladdens, always we expect that fortune's wind will continue to blow. As my eyes see all things as fearful visitations of the gods, so my ears with cureless song are filled, and consternation terrifies my sense. Therefore, I came from the palace alone, unaccompanied by chariot, by pomp and ceremony. To the father of my son, I bring propitious offerings, libations for the dead, a milk-sweet draught of sacred kind unblemished. resplendent liquors of the honey-working bee with liquid drops of a maiden spring <coughs> mingled. And this elixir of an ancient vine whose mother is the wild fields. And golden green, the fruit of fragrant olive trees always flourishing their leafy age and plated flowers children of the vacant earth my friends recite your chants and threnities recall Darius demon over these libations, sepulchral honors, which I lavish on the nether gods. The queen of the Persians, our chambers, libations for Chanting 
and pleasant, power is mournful, clear and diverse. Miserable sorrows, I shall cry out. Below the Sahagin, with them the other gods, leaders of death, glorious demon in their rises, the Persians to suck his mother, the dust, the man who never surpassed the Persian of Mary. Love is just a man who loves him. Fighting his lovely ways. Adonais, conductor, walk back. Adonais, send Lord Darius alone. Never by war wasted his men. Never in battle way. God of the first God in wisdom he was. To raise the silver saffron cloud, bless the lapis of thy crown, O Father Darius. O hear the call of woe, hear the recent sorrows, O Master of Masters, appear. Everything, Darius, 
Next, his son fulfilled his office well. His wisdom the helmsman to his spirit. Third, was Cyrus fortunate, whose rule brought peace to all the Lydian people and the Phrygian he acquired and watched his might against Ionia. No god resented him, for he was wise. <coughs> and fourth, was Cyrus's son, who shamed his country and his ancestral throne. But Artaphrenus, aided by his guile and his friends, whose task this was, slew him in his palace. After him, I, willing, drew my lot to root, and often led many great armies, but never cast so great a woe upon my city. Xerxes, my son, in all the wisdom of you, ignored my wisdom. Know this well, comrades old as I, all of us who held these powers never wrought so great a woe. To what end, my lord Darius, dost thou up on this? How could we, the Persian people, <coughs> fare the best? To never lead an expedition to the land of Greece, even if the Median host be born. <laughs> For Grecian soil is their own ally. What dost thou intend by this? Their own ally. It starves to death excessive numbers. But to be sure, we'll raise a well-equipped and chosen army. But not even those who remain in Greece shall have a safe return. What? Shall not all the host return across the Strait of Helen? Few of many, if the oracles of gods are credited. What we have gazed is what has passed, and no half prophecy succeeds, but either all or none. If we credit them, then he leaves behind his empty hopes persuading chosen numbers of his troops, who now are stationed where a sofa floods the plain. It's rich sap, kind to Boeotia. Here await them, the lowest depths of woe to suffer. Payment for his pride and godless arrogance. They, invading Greece, felt no awe. They did not hesitate to plunder images of gods and put temples to the torch. Altars were no more, and statues like trees were uprooted, torn from their bases in all confusion. Thus, their wickedness shall no less make them suffer. Other woes, the future holds in store, and still the fount of evil is not quenched. It wells up and overflows. So great will be the sacrificial cake of clotted war made at Plataea by Dorian weapons. And corpses piled up like sand shall witness mute even to the century to come before the eyes of men that never, being mortal, ought we cast our thoughts too high. <laughs> Insolence, once blossoming, bears its fruit, a tasseled field of doom, from which a weeping harvest reaped all tears. 
Behold the punishment of these. Remember Greece and Athens, lest you disdain your present fortunes and lust for more. Squandering great prosperity. Zeus is the chastener of over boastful minds, a grievous corrector. Therefore, advise him, admonished by reason to be wise, and cease his over boastful temper from sinning against the gods. And you, aged mother of Xerxes, Go to the palace and gather rich and brilliant cloths and take them and go to meet your son, for he has rent his embroidered robes to shreds. Gently soothe him with your words. To yours alone he'll listen. and the gateway of Pontus Master. And the isles along the headland washed by the sea, lying close to shore, Samos and Chios and Lesbos, the olive planted, and Paros and Nexos and Mykonos and Tenos, the neighbor of Andro. And the cities in the midst of the sea he did rule. Icarus and Lemnos and Nidos and Rhodus and the cities of Aphrodite, Paphos and Solus and Salamis, 
whose fault is the cause of our problems? Uh, Any the Persians whale well, losing their sons. We are overcome by the blows of the sea. Oh, how little from so many. We are wrecked the protectors. 
Greek scan firm in combat. The last two for my scan and unexpected roll. You mean the host? Routed and broken. With my garments and my woe. Alas, I will. And even more than woe. Double and triple the woe. Painful to us, but to enemies, joy. And that was our power. Strip the best of us. He <laughs> stripped us of our friends. We, we weep for the woe when the home would depart. Alas, oh, 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 o